Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Yucatan-style grilled pork. That's right, grilling season is upon us. And to celebrate, I wanted to share this fast, easy, delicious, and fairly beautiful recipe that may or may not be actual Yucatan-style. See, I actually stole this recipe from a neighborhood restaurant I frequent, and that's what they're calling it. So I really don't know for sure. But having said that, they are a sports bar. So I'm assuming they did their homework, and this is legit. But regardless, I really loved how this came out, and here's how we're going to put it together. So for step one, we're going to mix up what is a very easy marinade, made up in large part from fresh citrus juice. So as you can see, we have some limes, some lemons, and some orange. And I actually have two kinds of oranges here, a regular orange and the strange and exotic blood orange. Ooh, check it out. So pretty. And above and beyond its gorgeous and unusual appearance, it actually does have a little bit of a different flavor than regular orange. Of course, in something like this, no one's going to really notice that subtlety, but we will know. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut that fruit in half and then freshly squeeze it into a bowl. And we're not going to worry too much about exact amounts here. I mean, I've never been to the Yucatan, but I hear things. And one thing I hear is that they never use exact measurements for the juice for this. In fact, that reminds me, you can totally adjust the ratios here between the orange and the lemon and the lime, depending on what you want. Okay, more orange would mean a little sweeter, a little more subtle. Whereas if you increase the lime and or lemon, you can get something a little sharper. So of course, that kind of stuff's up to you. You are the mistress of the citrus. So we will go ahead and squeeze in our three types of citrus juice. And once that's set, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients, which includes a fairly large amount of minced garlic, and then something you may have never used before, but you've eaten many, many times. Powdered annatto seed, which is here a little bit for the flavor, but mostly for the color. So that stuff is probably the most common natural red food coloring. So if you've eaten orange cheeses or red hot dogs, you've had this stuff. So we will add a spoon of that, as well as some ground chipotle. We will also do a little bit of ground cumin, or cumin if you prefer. You're generally safe not pronouncing it the way I do. We're also going to go ahead and toss in a nice big spoon of cayenne, as well as some dry oregano, preferably Mexican if you can get it. But your standard Greek oregano will work. And then we'll go ahead and finish this thing off with some freshly ground black pepper, as well as a generous portion of kosher salt. And that's going to be it for the marinade which really, if we think about it, is more of a citrus-based brine. So we'll take a whisk and we'll mix that up. And once that's combined, we can go ahead and set that aside and move on to greet our meat. And please note, this recipe should work beautifully with any kind of grillable cut of pork. But today I'm going to be using a couple whole pork tenderloins, which have been fully trimmed. And by that I mean all that silver skin, that tough membrane has been trimmed off. Okay, we really don't have to worry about those little pieces of fat like that. This tenderloin is a very, very lean cut of meat. So that little bit of fat's not going to hurt anything. And to prep these, all we're going to do is cut them in half, or somewhere close to half. And then we'll turn them and cut them lengthwise, which is going to give me eight fairly uniform pieces of meat with which to work. And once our pork has been portioned, we can go ahead and add that to our marinade. And we'll give that a mix with our hand to make sure it's thoroughly and evenly coated. And once that's happened, what we're going to want to do is marinate this in the fridge for about four to six hours. And we could, if we want at this point, transfer that into a zip-top bag and pop that in the fridge. But I figured, hey, the bowl's already dirty. And if we press a piece of plastic wrap onto the top, we're basically going to have the exact same effect. But either way, whether you use a bag or wrap it up like this, we will transfer that into the fridge for about four to six hours, at which point we can pull it out and get it ready for the grill. And the first phase of that would be to remove it from the marinade and kind of dry it off a little bit. So what I like to do is just transfer that into a paper towel lined bowl which is gonna absorb and wick away most of that moisture. And once those are fairly dry, we will remove that towel. And even though we've blotted away most of that marinade, this meat is still pretty moist. And as you may know, moist meat loves to stick on grills, which is why we're gonna go ahead and drizzle in a little bit of vegetable oil, along with a little more of our powdered annatto seed. And then we will get our hand dirty one more time, giving that a mix. And then once those pieces of pork are evenly coated, we're pretty much ready to grill. So I'm going to head outside to where I still don't have a proper grill, which is why I'm using this makeshift version made from bricks. I know it doesn't look like much, but after the zombie apocalypse, this is pretty much how we're all going to be cooking. So it doesn't hurt to practice. But anyway, we're going to place that pork down on the grill, evenly spaced and not too crowded, which as you can see is basically the opposite of what I did here. And let's say for the sake of argument, you also did it improperly and your pork is not ideally placed. What do you do? Try to fix it immediately by moving the pieces? No. If we try to move this meat too soon, it's gonna tear. So we have to let it sear onto those grates 
until it releases naturally. And you'll be able to tell when you go to turn it. So just wait, kind of test it with the tongs, and eventually it will form a crust and you'll be able to turn it like this. And fair warning, even if you do everything perfectly, a little bit's gonna stick, but it won't be too bad. And then as we turn them, we can kind of space them a little better and continue on from there. And because we have fairly small pieces here, these are gonna grow up pretty quick. I believe these only took me about four or five minutes per side. And while I generally go by feel, you can shoot for an internal temp of about 135 to 140. So I grilled mine up over some beautiful smelling natural mesquite charcoal. And then once those have been cooked to our liking, we'll go ahead and pull those off the grill and transfer those onto some kind of serving platter. In my case, one that's been lined with some finely sliced cabbage, along with a little bit of pickled red onion. So we will place that meat over the top. And of course, as always, we have to let that meat rest about five or six minutes before we eat. But that shouldn't be a problem because that's about how long it's gonna take you to garnish this. And for me, garnish means adding a few more pickled red onions. I'm pretty sure we've shown you how to make those in another video, but I can't remember. But I will go over that on the blog. There's only two ingredients. And then I'm gonna finish this up with a nice big handful of chopped cilantro. And that's it. Our possibly Yucatan style grilled pork is done. And besides being gorgeous and delicious, this is also very versatile. All right, we can eat this as is, or sliced up on a salad, or chopped up for tacos, or one of these pieces would probably fit perfectly on a half a hot dog bun, where it would make a very memorable sandwich. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna go in and cut off a piece and eat it ad naturel. And as usual, I'll cut off a small end piece, because if the driest, most overcooked part is good, you know the rest of it's gonna be amazing. And this was. Just an absolutely lovely piece of grilled meat, a little bit smoky, a little bit spicy, with a gorgeous tanginess from that citrus. It just has a very vibrant, bright flavor profile, if you will excuse the expression. I just really liked how this came out. So anyway, that's it, what I'm calling Yucatan-style grilled pork. As I've already admitted, I don't know how authentic this is, since I've never been to the Yucatan. Although from what I hear, as far as peninsulas go, it's supposed to be pretty nice. But anyway, the real point is, if you're looking for something interesting and delicious for your grill, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.